vividly remember watching Eraserhead for the very first time back in 2015, perfectly surrounded by complete silence and pitch black darkness, submerging myself in pure lynching goodness that turned out to be the catalyst for not only digging further into that director's artistry, but also having him become my favorite director. Blue Velvet was my first ever lynching experience back in 2013, only ever increasing in all sorts of value over repeat viewings, as is the case with any great film. But let's get back on track. There I am, in the middle of a perfect viewing experience, completely immersed in the bizarre adventures of Henry Spencer occasionally getting reminded of David First's work, which doesn't distract, but instead boosts the sparks of inspiration surrounding this exceptionally captivating experience. I'm sitting there, pretty much motionless, taking it all in, in what feels like a privilege that, at a certain point, starts to feel too good to be true, which turned out to be true a few minutes later as a friend of my mother's aunt that was staying in our place at the time returns early from their nightly escapades on her own, trying to strike up a conversation with me while I'm in the middle of watching this masterpiece for the very first time. See, I wasn't just being pedantic again. I was just being... eerily intuitive... again. So I paused the film attempting to act nicely despite being rather frustrated, and after about five minutes the conversation dies down, so I resume the film. But she stays in the same room, eventually starting to ask questions regarding the strangers taking place on screen. <sighs> Alright, this wasn't supposed to just be a rant about someone ruining an otherwise perfect viewing experience for me. This is however leading to a point, as I was forced to accept the situation I was in because I can't be stubborn like that, and I felt particularly eager about continuing that adventure until the very end. She did quiet down eventually, but her somewhat unhinged presence in that room bothered me, especially as she wasn't watching the film with me, serving as nothing more than a distraction. So, in spite of that, the film pulled me completely back in anyway, and kept me in until the very end, which was additionally satisfying given that initial urge of finishing what I started. That's only one of the many reasons as to why I love Eraserhead so much, since repeat viewings have only signified the power this film holds as a spectacle as well as a source of long-term inspiration. to storytelling in general, instantly grasping the appeal of using abstraction as a tool to convey more than what we see and feel in the moment. My love for that pure concept of horror was also heightened, feeling out when an unsettling build-up feels worthwhile and when a startling moment feels earned, which in the case of David Lynch is every time as far as I'm concerned especially when effective horror can seamlessly turn into comedy without feeling out of place. Oh, you are sick. Sickness can occur or be conjured up just about anywhere, which of course is unfortunate enough already but having a close and obligation attached can escalate or even spread the said sickness. It doesn't have to be literal, 
obviously. But if and when it does reach that unfortunate level of becoming literal, that overbearing sense of nurture becomes laced with the sort of paranoid fear that may very well send one down to hell. Sometimes it really hurts to care, but that's something I'll push to the back of my head and leave it there for another time. For now, I really want to try and focus on what makes me happy. And what makes me happy always feels so right, never repetitive or limiting. I became sick of the repetitive norm, and my depth of field in the area of creativity expanded exponentially. I can turn to countless moments or scenes in reference to that burst of inspiration, or spend a ridiculous amount of time gushing about the inexplicable wonder of this living being shattering any sort of skepticism regarding practical effects, but instead I'm going to focus on a more distant sequence that'll always stay close to my heart. Any instance of stop-motion animation stays close to my heart by default. It's what got me started on a more serious level in the first place, and it's just wonderful. I have a lot of great memories associated with the form. A lot of waterfall inspiration spawned from some brick films that I consider to be classics at this point. The development of my filmmaking skills through the art of stop motion has been a fruitful process for sure, and even a short or subtle use of it triggers an overarching sense of delight for me. So whenever a film surprises me with the use of stop motion, I go into a bit of a trance, as I'm captivated by the moment but also taken back at the same time. And that of course applies to the adorable stop motion sequence in Eraserhead. It's small in scale, yet deep in scope, and it achieves so much by doing so little. Because less is indeed more. I say that so often, but I don't think I'll ever get tired of reinforcing that principle. Especially in this instance. Even the idea of not having much to work with sparked inspiration and led me to create. From limitations to finding myself in a space that felt limitless. Animation in general has always been a great source of inspiration for me. Not just because I liked watching cartoons as a kid, like any kid really, but because these specific styles spoke to me on a different level, made me feel a specific way that created a whole gravitational pull around it all. I loved drawing while subconsciously coming up with my own style too so I definitely could have headed down the tedious path of traditional animation. I never consciously opted for any specific form though. Stop motion was just accessible to me at the time, so naturally I gravitated towards that one. As for a razor head, the inspiration seems to never stop flowing. It seems to flow in the background even. Not just in the subconscious, but also in the deepest apertures of some other intimidating areas, which of course include the inevitable darkness. The subdued yet limitless horror of this film overlaps any sort of darkness though, whether mental or physical, the faith of not being too late comes into view as a saving grace.
closed in on me and opportunities vanished as quickly as things tend to vanish in this barely functional landscape, I felt motivated to express and fulfill myself through a different yet not so distant form of filmmaking. Last year's rewatches of Eraserhead certainly sparked my urge to return to stop motion. I remember having a huge smile on my face when that sequence came on and got reminded of how limitless that form can be. I don't need to rely on people, rent out a sizable space, or build huge constructions. Instead, I can build small constructions in the comfort of my own room, avoid headaches thanks to these plastic wonders, and create exactly what I want. So of course I returned.